Hi guys, welcome back, welcome to the FSX404 channel and today we're going to do an approach into the third most extreme airport according to the History Channel. The airport is Gustav III Airport, more commonly known as St. Bart's. The very first thing we need to understand about St. Bart's is that St. Bart's is a VFR airport only, meaning that the only way we can land there is VFR, using visual references, visual points. I do have the St. Bart's Airport plate. It's a VFR plate. It is the same thing that Courcheville Airport has. Uh, that's another one that's a VFR only airport. And I have a link down in the description. You guys can download it and check it out for yourself. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the information from this approach plate and Microsoft Flight Simulator graphics. To be more exact, I'm going to use Fly Tampa's St. Martin add on graphics because Fly Tampa did a pretty good job in having most of the visual points on there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the whole overview of the St. Bart's area. And as we're looking at this overview, we should note that there are only three entry points into St. Bart's Airport. Excuse my French, I'm not sure how to exactly pronounce these, but the first point is Forche, the second point is Coco, and the third point is Frigate. We will use one of these three entry points to land at St. Bart's. And as we can see, all these points, Forche, Frigate, and Coco, or all visual points. Now, Fly Tampa did not add the island of Coco in its scenery, but that island is roughly where I've marked it. And the point Coco, our entry point, is a little bit off of that. Not to worry about it. One thing that we have to understand about VFR flying is that VFR flying is not as exact as IFR flying. In IFR, we have to be exactly where we're supposed to be. With VFR, all we have to do is be in the area. Just real quick, all these points that I've mentioned, these are all GPS points. Believe it or not, you can put them in your GPS and you can fly to them. But that's not what we're supposed to use to land at St. Bart's. We're supposed to use visual flight rules. And we don't need the GPS for visual flight rules, so these points are obvious. Having said all this, if we're coming from the north or northwest, we're going to use the Point Forche to land at St. Bart's. Obviously, the Point Forche is the island of Forche, is a little island, and that is an obvious visual point. What we're going to do is we're going to fly to that point. We're going to fly to that island. From that island of Forche, from that point, we're going to fly to the point called Pain de Sucre or Sugarloaf. A Sugarloaf point, even though it's a GPS point, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, in a Flight Tampa scenery, it is actually a rock that you can see from the air, and it's pretty big. It's not exactly an island, but it is a rock that we can see from the air, and we can use that rock to begin our approach. Now, since we're talking about Pain de Sucre or Sugarloaf Rock, we can also talk about the southern approach. If we're coming from the south, we're going to fly to the Coco area. This is not exact, but all we have to do is fly to that area. We're going to use our best guess, and we're just going to fly to that area. And from the point Coco, or from the area Coco, we're going to fly to the Sugarloaf Point, or to the point Pain de Sucre. Now, once we arrive to this Sugarloaf Point from both areas, whether we're coming from the north, the Forche, or we're coming from the south, the Coco area, that's where our approach is going to begin. Another thing to mention is, as far as altitudes go, over the Point Forche or the Forche Island, or over the Coco area, we are going to be at 1,500 feet. We're going to do that for both points. Once we reach the Sugarloaf Point, Pain de Sucre, we're still going to be at 1,500 feet. From this point, there are two approaches that we can do. The first approach is do a straight in on runway 10. All we're going to do is turn to a heading of 100 and do a visual straight in approach on runway 10. And for this approach, we're going to use a visual descent. I know some of you guys are going to say, what does my descent have to be during this approach? Whatever looks right. As I said, VFR flying is not exact. So from the Sugarloaf point, our straight in approach onto runway 10, we're just going to do a visual descent. That's all it is. One thing to remember is that once we reach the little hill we overfly just as we descend onto the runway, technically we're supposed to be 50 feet over that hill. Again, this is a VFR flying and nobody's going to be there on the ground making sure that you're 50 feet. But for safety, you're supposed to be 50 feet above that highest point of the hill, which is 200 feet MSL. And from the actual videos we've seen, a lot of the pilots that have been flying in there, they really ignore that. They don't really get into trouble. But technically speaking, we're supposed to be 50 feet above that point. So the straight in approach is basically simple. Pick up the runway visually, do a visual descent, make sure you're a little bit above the hill before you land, and then drop down onto the runway and land. It's really as simple as that. Now, the second approach into St. Bart's from the Sugarloaf Point is a traffic pattern entry approach. This is going to be if the runway 28 is being used and we're going to have to fly around and come back and land on runway 28. 
And the way to do that is, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to descend down to 800 feet. At the same time we're descending down to 800 feet, which is the traffic pattern altitude for St. Bart's Airport, we're going to head for that low area. If, if we look at the little peninsula sticking out, we're going to head just for the edge of it. And once we reach that edge, we're going to fly parallel to the runway. If we pay close attention to the chart, we can see that this path at 800 feet will bring us in between two points. There's something to aim for. We can aim in between those two hills. And then just as we pass those two hills, there's going to be a third hill to the left. As we're passing this third hill, we're going to do a 135 degree turn to the left to go in between these two hills. So all we're doing is we're actually flying in between hills. And this approach I think is a little bit harder to do just because you have to be familiar with the area. You have to know, okay, here's the hill. Let's start a turn. And at the same time, we have to start a descent to stay above those trees and make sure that we don't hit them. Okay, now I'm in between two hills. From this point on, we're going to ask ourselves, when is that next point when we start turning on to the final? This is going to be a very short final. Everything happens so fast, and you have to be exact. But in VFR flying, remember, in VFR flying, there's nothing exact. And this turn is really going to depend on experience. My advice is that we start that turn onto the final as soon as we're over the beach. In the end, we can always make low adjustments, and we're going to land. Since this runway is pretty short, obviously we want to use a short field approach for just about every plane we use uh, to land here. If runway 10 is being used, no matter where we're coming from, from the north, we're going to fly to the point Forche. But the third approach available into St. Bart's is that if we're coming from northeast and the runway 28 is being in use, we can use the point Frigate to land. Frigate is obviously a visual point, it's another island, it's another little small island. And this time, over the point Frigate, we're going to be at 1,000 feet. From the point Frigate, we're going to turn and we're going to aim our airplane visually to the right of this lagoon, to this low area. Again, remember, this is a VFR approach. This is going to be a VFR descent, meaning we're going to use our judgment to descent. It may take a couple of times to get it right, but we're going to use a visual descent. So from the point frigate at 1,000 feet, we're going to fly to the edge of that lagoon, and we're going to start our descent. And then, of course, we will turn on to the final when it's appropriate. I know a lot of you guys are saying, when exactly do I turn on final? when it is appropriate. Even if you're not exactly lined up, make a little adjustments and line up with the runway as soon as you can. In St. Bart's case, it does take experience and that's why pilots flying into St. Bart's for real are really required to fly in there with instructors a few times to be able to get checked out and come back there and land by themselves. So the main thing about St. Bart's is knowing the three entry points, knowing what to do when you get there, and most importantly, being able to make adjustments as you fly. One more piece of advice about turning on to final, which I don't think I've ever mentioned this before, but this is something to keep in the back of your mind. It is always better to undershoot than to overshoot the runway. If we undershoot the runway, we can make adjustments faster. If we overshoot it, we have to come back and then make the adjustments. So if you're not sure, it's always better to turn a little early than a little too late. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.